Can you tell us a little more about your IPO? Like, how are you going to use the proceeds? We would like to invest the proceeds from this Hong Kong IPO in infrastructure and R&D in artificial intelligence. The production cost for technology is the key factor in commercializing it. So the second phase of industrialization is to reduce the cost to a lower level so it can be used in all kinds of scenarios in our daily lives. 60% of the capital raised in this IPO will be spent in research and development to build up an infrastructure called Artificial Intelligence Algorithm Center, which will be used for mass production of AI models. That will enhance the productivity and reduce cost. Can okay, I ask you about R&D a little bit? I, I noticed that, um, looking at your earnings, that you're investing a lot in R&D. Um, why is that? Um, is it because, is it getting harder to source your products from overseas? We chose a more fundamental but more difficult path by investing in AI infrastructure at an early stage. This investment, including investing in R&D talent, accounted for a large portion of our R&D expense. But we are already seeing the scaled effect from our investments. So what is your company doing in order to make sure that you're compliant with China's new data security laws. SenseTime always attaches great importance to data security. To some extent, the owner of data is the data processor, but we believe that even technology providers should understand how to safely process data using the technology. I think, as the biggest player in the AI industry, we should work with other players to formulate industry standards. Data can only be safely circulated and used once the standard is established. I believe that will benefit the whole industry. Uh, your, your revenues are up 92% and your, uh, I think your gross profit margins are in the 70% range, 70 is very impressive. But your, uh, your, your losses, your operating losses are getting wider as well. I guess I have to ask you, I mean, when is your company going to become profitable, and what are you doing in order to ensure that? SenseTime's revenue is very healthy. Its loss to revenue and loss to asset ratios are very low. We believe that investing heavily in technology R&D at the early stage is the only way to make an impact on the industry. For us, we are seeing a very clear path to achieving profitability for the next few years, thanks to our early investment in AI infrastructure. It's been a year of regulation. Uh, we've seen it from online gaming, the tutoring, and now uh, the Cybersecurity Administration has, has uh, mentioned that uh, they're, they might actually, um, they're looking at maybe more, more regulation in the AI space. What is your company doing in order to head off more regulation? We believe timely interactive regulation will benefit the emerging industries, especially for the ones in high-speed development. Some premature regulations can't appropriately reflect the boundary of an industry and the technology if the regulators haven't yet fully grasped the changes in the technologies. So regulators should keep adjusting what and how they should regulate. But the regulation can also be a painful process if it comes too late. When a great amount of investment has already been put into the sector, it will need a lot more efforts to correct the direction. That's why we always believe that two parts of regulations are needed for emerging technologies like ours. First, agility. It can adjust the content and the intensity of the regulation with an evolving perspective. Second, immediacy. Companies should engage in active communications with academics and regulators to embrace the changes in a timely fashion. Uh, your company was hit by uh, sanctions during the Trump administration, and that sort of continued um, more or less during the Biden administration. I think maybe it's one unit that was affected. But how are these sanctions uh, affecting your company's ability to grow overseas as well as the source from, over, from overseas? First, I need to reiterate that the U.S. entity list has no basis, but it indeed hurts our overall plan and development for international expansion. It requires us to do more communication to explain the details of the export control when expanding businesses in some places. 
So we also spend a lot of time and energy to make sure we abide by the export controls. But from our perspective, what we have always been doing is just to use the technology to empower the industries to enhance productivity.